Welcome back to the Real Couch Rise podcast where we overanalyze all things Bravo. And today we have found your next reality television binge and we are so excited about it. Yes, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives just came out. It's on Hulu, it's on Disney, depending on where you are in the world. And oh my God, it is so filled with drama. It is just over the top. It is incredible. I was instantly suckered in. <laughs> it is such, it's literally exactly what we need right now. Like we were just talking about last episode how there is such a drought in bravo right now and i feel like this show is like such a perfect intersection of a bravo show like you know it's giving real housewives of salt lake city vibes but then Mm -hmm. it i don't know it has like a younger kind of take on it it's just like it's giving mean girls it's giving tiktok like content creator (laughs) culture it's like it's such an intersection of all of these like pop culture things it's so crazy (laughs) yeah yeah i feel like bravo must be like shaking in its boots right now like this show is so good i'm just like so impressed of what they've been able to do here it's so good and it makes me wonder like do these girls live in the same realm of like the housewives of Salt Lake City? Like there's obviously the age differences and stuff, mm-hmm. but I wonder if they all know each other because they say, you know, Salt Lake City is a small place. <laughs> yeah. Like are they in the same circles or like what's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's possible because Taylor was actually on uh, the Shenanigans podcast with Sheena Shea um, and or Sheena Marie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she was saying that she was actually like interviewed I think it's before the mom talk drama and everything uh, about potentially going on Salt Lake City and apparently she didn't have enough drama in her life. So that's Oops. wild. I wow. Know. They are for sure shaking yeah. in their boots. Like, shaking to your their point. Boots. Oh my yeah. gosh. So for those of you who don't know, could you yeah. give a quick recap of what The Secret Live of Mormon Wives is about. <laughs> sure, I can try. I can try to do it justice. <laughs> Basically, this like group of like women all became friends because they were on TikTok. They were on this thing that they kind of like dubbed Mom Talk. And one of the big pieces of drama that kind of happened on Mom Talk and in on TikTok in general because it did really like blow up and go like super viral was the fact that we found out that they were all kind of like swingers and one person in particular was kind of like the whistleblower of yeah. this situation. Uh, and that was Taylor, our kind of like main character that we first meet kind of like on this show as well. And so she kind of like blew up the story of all of this drama and it kind of like tore the friend group apart. And essentially what we're watching here now in this series is kind of like all of them coming back together and like trying to put together the pieces and all of the like fallout of what has happened in their relationship since the like outing. And then also, you know, like everything that's also just you know, happened afterwards as well. To see if Mom Talk can survive this. Which is I don't know if Mom Talk can survive this. I don't know. <laughs> and and Mom Talk also there it's all a group of Mormon yes. wives, right? And they're yes. all mothers and yes. they're content creators and they're they're mainly doing the TikTok dances and they're yeah. they're being sponsored. Like this is their livelihood. Like they're making a living off of this. So I did really find it interesting to see the lens of the content creator tiktok kind of Mm -hmm. world yes and then intersecting with like the mormon world and then like the girls are all different varying degrees of like devout is that how you'd say it like yeah they and it's it's really interesting because i feel like i'm always learning about like different types of mormonism (laughs) through these shows yeah like i have so many questions that emerge and some of the things that they do or don't do and like yeah. A lot of it is they're trying to kind of like more, they're trying to modernize it, right? They're trying mm-hmm. to push back against some of the things that are seen as taboo mm-hmm. in the culture. And they also faced a lot of backlash. Apparently, like the Mormon community before this even came out, were trying to like get it banned and like oh, really? just really not happy about it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I, get, I guess I could kind of see that. I think we've also have seen that with like Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Like it's very much, you know, we have the Lisa Barlows who are like super like, consider themselves to be like super Mormon, super devout, but also like uh, own a liquor company and, you know, like do drink alcohol. Uh, But then you also have the people like Heather Gay and Whitney who are like in the process of leaving the church and, you know, are talking about kind of like all the trauma and different things that like are associated with that their time there. Um, So to kind of see like a little bit of like an in-between where all of the women are kind of like 
do identify as Mormons actively, um, but they are just kind of like on the spectrum of like how religious they might be and what they choose to engage in and what the, what they're willing to admit happens in their life yeah. um, is really interesting. That is what's interesting is that some of them, like you said, some of them drink or some of them... Uh, I think I some of them know, smoke. Do, like they one smoke. Of the, they do some other things. They yeah, go get they Botox do. so that yeah. they can get laughing gas. Because yeah. apparently that's a lot. Like something like that. It's like you can't yeah. in in the Mormon Mormon culture. Like you can't have coffee. You yes. can't have alcohol because like yeah. your body's a temple. But you can like microdose ketamine and like get Botox. <laughs> get Botox. <laughs> have laughing gas. Drink yeah. copious amounts of soda. So, like insane yeah. levels of soda. That, like. That can't be good for you. <laughs> that, that can't no. be safe. <laughs> they were, but they were also saying on, I was listening to some of the podcasts that they were doing that mm-hmm. like Salt Lake City Mormon and then like Mormon in the mm-hmm. rest of the world is, oh. is very different. I think they're a lot more traditional and ha- and like strict on, on some of the rules. Like outside, for what of, they were saying. outside of Utah or within Utah? Like outside of Utah. As more traditional. Sorry, inside of Utah is more traditional than oh. the rest of the world. Oh, interesting. From, that's from what they said. Yeah. I have to grain of salt all of this. Like, I I, yeah. I don't know that much about it. But that's why I find it so fascinating because you are yeah. also learning in these things. That, like, you're watching yeah. this crazy drama that is literally Mean Girls, the, the TV show in, in yeah. reality. And then yeah. you're also learning a little bit about Mormonism. <laughs> That's just it. Like I I was trying to think about like why I felt like this was such an interesting TV show. And I think part of it is because, yeah, like if you think about what we've consumed in, you know, recent memory of like documentary style things or reality TV style things, like there is a lot of kind of like, you know, we're really interested in cults. We're really interested, like the whole like Warren Jeffs thing. Like that's like the super fundamentalist uh, people. Mm -hmm. Um, were even like the TikTok drama that like happened on Netflix a few months ago, the 7M cult, right. like the dance cult. Yeah, like yeah. We're, we're really interested in that. And obviously I'm not like trying to equate Mormonism with a cult, but it is like a religion that's like different than most of us are kind of like brought up, but even though, you know, it's adjacent to Christianity, it's within Christianity. Um, and so it is like, it's still pretty different than like most of us live our daily lives. So it's super fascinating to like have that like glimpse behind the curtain. That's it. I feel like they've really found like a very unique intersection of a lot of things that people are very interested in right now. So mm-hmm. like, it's not surprising to me that it's like a runaway hit and every, mm-hmm. it's literally came out Friday. Like it came out yeah. like a week ago. Did it and only everyone, come out Friday? I think so. And like oh everyone has binged the show. Yeah. <laughs> literally well and it's interesting too because they're all like in like super pretty packages right like all of them have like these like gorgeous long extensions they're like (laughs) all like super like perfectly like airbrushed like they have the lashes they have the whole setup even like the like the way that the camera um like the setting on like the camera like the filter or whatever that was like on them that just made it look like everything around them was like super white super glowing like really like just like no dimension it's just like oh wow like at the beginning you're like wow that's really overexposed um (laughs) but yeah it's just like the way that they kind of like portray them and yeah I think that that also kind of is like oh wow look at all these really beautiful people like go about and live their life (laughs) I was just like I I have to say like it wasn't something on my radar until it was just all over my Instagram and just like seeing some of the things people were saying about it I was like oh my gosh I have to I have to watch this and it also (laughs) really talks about specifically in Mormon culture but like the traditional kind of um like gender norms and like Mm. the the biases and the the stereotypes that are affecting like women against like you know what men could do versus versus what women could do and like we know that that's very prevalent in that culture and like Mm -hmm. it's so crazy to see it impacting girls who are like 20 something years old yeah actually so the thing I was the most shocked about is on the first episode yeah when when like you sh- see all the girls and they're all they're literally 22 to the oldest is 31 yeah <laughs> I was shocked like I, know. I don't know when you when you hear a title mm-hmm. like the secret lives of Mormon wives yeah I just I guess actually maybe I should have <laughs> equated that to being that they would be super young and have all these children but like I thought they would all be in like their 30s <laughs> I, I at least thought that they were all going to be in their 30s I didn't suspect that anybody like I guess I didn't realize anybody would be as young as like 22 and that is like one of the younger younger people was like 22 there's one that's 23 24 like they're all and like, then, like half of them are divorced and yeah still in their 20s 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it is it is kind of crazy how young they are, especially if you like hear the mo- or like mom talk, like, I don't know, like a mom in my mind is like yeah. 30s, 40s, 50s. <laughs> it's like, it's just it's a different, a different experience for sure. I just um, can't be- imagine being like 22 years old and having like two kids. Yeah, well, having two kids. And also the interesting thing about it, I think it, also in that first episode is they all kind of like go around the room and they're like, is every single one of us the main breadwinner of our household? And they all could confirm that they were all the main breadwinner of their I, household. I was like, <laughs> yes, queen, like, good for you. Like, this is what we want to see. <laughs> <laughs> totally. But it's also just so crazy because we are, you're then also kind of like seeing the tension of like that in their relationships and that in this kind of like construct of yeah. like what the church has kind of like set for them in terms of expectations of like being moms and being like, you know, people like whatever that entails within the church um but also then being like you know the people that like are gonna get like a twenty thousand dollar sponsorship deal and like have to you know support their family and yeah do all that work (laughs) the other really interesting thing about the show is they have a dynamic really quickly of like they they call it basically the saints and the sitters of like basically they kind of have like a divide in the friend group and it, it kind of boils down to who is like the better Mormon kind of yes. there's like the girls who are like really devout and mm-hmm. then there's the girls who like drink and do other things mm-hmm. and they kind of have like this like divide there's that yeah. but then there's also these two girls who are kind of vying for being the group leader so there's mm-hmm. like really like that mean girls vibe as well yes. yeah definitely yeah it's like the katie heron versus regina george like who's gonna win Who? how are they gonna duke it out <laughs> but i don't actually think that taylor wants to be queen bee like i feel like she's just kind of like existing and just yeah. have all this drama around her and is getting yeah. more clout and then whitney the other girl is like very angry about this <laughs> yeah especially as like taylor gets like more and more pregnant throughout the like eight episodes you're just like girl does not care girl like could care less about like who's the queen bee and like who's in charge if anything i feel like there's more of like a power struggle with like demi and whitney of like who's yeah, gonna well, be the starts queen to bee. happen it's true yeah. it's so crazy so i want to talk about whitney for a second because whitney yeah. uh, spoilers if you haven't Spo- found spoiler out. alert <laughs> Whitney, I feel like you start off, or at least for me, like the first few episodes with her, I was like, oh, I really like this girl. She's like so level headed. And like, I like that she's like, you know, trying to modernize Mormonism. And then like, as the episodes go more, I'm like, oh, oh, you're like being super judgy. Like she literally (laughs) is like being so rude against the other girls who are not as like devout as her and who don't live, you know, life in the same way that she does, which is like, literally the episode before she was like i want to try to modernize the culture and yeah people, like, <laughs> and then the way she just like would literally say do the meanest things or like stir the pot so much yes. and then when she gets called out on it she's like i just feel incredibly ambushed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah i know like uh i just i was actually kind of very impressed and a little scared of how well Whitney plays that game of kind of like not even like stirring like I don't even know if it's stirring the pot because I think like a Dorinda Medley is the one like stirring the pot (laughs) she's gonna like go in like bull in the china china shop and like you know fully admit to what she's doing but Whitney is kind of like you know spreading these like secrets like within the group and like you know cloak and dagger kind of style um and then letting it kind of like unleash at the right moment and then she's like fight <laughs> it, but it's but then then like cry when people are upset yeah. about it and like play yeah. victim I've never seen it that immediate and like yeah. that transparent it literally it was Regina George like it literally made me think of the three-way phone call when like yeah. they're on the phone and they're trying yes. to get Katie Herring to like say mean things and they're like oh my god I can't believe you'd say that about her like that's <laughs> literally what was happening like they're yeah. in a group and like Whitney is going and telling all these people like well this person says that she doesn't like you because you're too Mormon like literally this is right out of Mean Girls <laughs> it actually it is right out of Mean Girls she's like but then also just so you know that person that I just said something about you that Wait, so, okay, I guess we'll give the little, like, background, yeah. background to what it was. I think it was that she said that Demi had said that Taylor was too... No, was that Jen was too Mormon? Yeah. So then in that happening, like, Jen is then like, oh, I don't like Demi because she said that about me. And then, in the same breath, Whitney is like, oh, but also Demi, your new enemy, said something about 
Taylor and said that Taylor is white trash. Yeah. So you can now go tell Taylor that Demi said that. And like, it's just like the little, like, and it literally all unfolded. Basically, the girls went on a trip. Yeah. And, and honestly, like, I feel like they're taking notes from Housewives because they go on this trip. Yeah. And then they're like, we have a truth box and we're going to like, (laughs) read these questions and they're like yeah. they're like so cutthroat and they're obviously going to stir up so much drama yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i never in a million years thought that it was going to be as intense as it was like when i saw like a little truth box i was like oh that's a cute concept like let's see what happens and then it was like why do you hate her why and do you think like, she's the worst Whitney, person why ever? are you so obsessed with taylor and angry yeah. that she has more clout than you yeah. <laughs> who do you like the least in this group <laughs> let's go for the jugular guys let's just not even like, like like no funny business as each girl got called out they would just be like well this person did that so that's yeah. what happened it was like like they're just like diverting and then like yeah. it's just like mass chaos yeah and then even at the end of all of that like you know they walk away and then Whitney is then mad at Macy because Macy oh, yeah. didn't like stand up for Whitney well enough in that moment and Macy's like but I don't even remember like whether or not you did say that about Jen like it's like it's just the whole like, and Macy's like the only one who has like stood by Whitney's side like yeah. this whole time. So yeah, like there's a clear villain that emerges. I yeah. feel like they, it's one of those like the TV villain and like the real villain. Like yeah. I feel like they you think that you're being set up for like Taylor to be the villain. Yes, because she like um, exposed the whole like mom talk like swingers drama and everything like that. And, yeah, and then and it's she's actually, a little bit unhinged. <laughs> and then it's bit. actually, but I feel like she's not that unhinged in the show. I feel like it's they true. talk about. Yeah. I mean, except for the, the whole beginning. Rest thing. Yeah. yeah, but even then, it's like maybe Dakota makes her unhinged, which I think happens. <laughs> Definitely, a lot of toxic relationships are yeah are not being displayed. Not not a good situation um, there. But like. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, anyways, and then Whitney ends up being the one who's the actual villain. Yeah. And, but then, like, I don't think it's just an edit thing either because I was listening to them doing a podcast on the, on the Vile Files and mm-hmm. all of the girls were there except for Taylor who had gone before, like, right. the week before. Okay, yeah. Except for Whitney and Whitney was supposed to go and she mm-hmm. bailed, but she was, like, in L.A. Oh, and she just, like, didn't show up. And yeah. it was all the girls and they're all basically just, like, yeah, this is who she is. Like, this yeah. is on display. And, like, none yeah. of them are friends with her except for Macy, who right. is, like, kind of friends with her, but, like, right. not to the same extent anymore. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and I feel like Whitney kind of, like, also, like, a little bit, like, she, as you said before, a little bit, she plays the victim. So she, like, you know, goes in, does the dirty work, kind of, like, tries to, like, you know, I think she does it pretty, like, skillfully and, like, doesn't make it look like her hands got dirty. Um, but then she does kind of like take a step back and she can like cry and she can like make herself look like the victim and she can like make everybody else look like the villain. Um, But then she also then takes the opportunity to be like, I'm removing myself from this toxic friend group because you guys are all really, and I don't want to be part of this anymore. I'm Um, disengaging a la Meredith. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) There's something about it. There's something in the air in Utah. Um, Right. Well, someone also said, I can't believe there's another Whitney in Salt Lake City, who's going through a worst. healing journey. <laughs> Helen and Finn. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just yeah. the craziest one, I think, was the Valentine's Day when she does oh, this, God. like, really mean prank to Demi, and, like, yeah. that's clearly to make fun of her and, like, yes. shed light of this rumor that had gone around. Yeah. Um, And then Demi was upset, and then literally yeah. Whitney's like, I just feel really, like bombarded by the situation yeah or like, I, like feel, I feel like atta- i think i actually even wrote it down i feel like really like attacked or whatever yeah <laughs> oh and then she called her and then she called and then she called demi two-faced yeah <laughs> and it was just it like was just so funny what? yeah it's just uh, um it's, it's unbelievable wild. it is yeah. it is it's weird and it's also funny too because like i feel like the whole whitney thing like whitney separating herself from the group is supposed to kind of like look at like herself like you know she's like harry styles or something she's leaving one direction um <laughs> and mom just, talk can't survive without her she could, couldn't clear. survive without her um and she's like trying to like you know forge her own path and go out on her own and she's gonna like become uh oh god ballerina farm and like go like get set like a set up like a homestead um <laughs> and she's like trying to kind of like portray herself in this like interesting light and i just I don't know. Like, I, I get that there's kind of, like, the struggle of, like, how long can mom talk really survive? How much can, like, you only rely on, like, this group of friends to, like, be your 
income and like maybe you do kind of need to like be able to like stand on your own two feet and like you know break out and build your own brand but at the same time like the way that Whitney's kind of going about it is just like I don't know I don't think it's working I don't I don't know if it's translating to the masses unfortunately yeah. but maybe it is if you guys watched it and you thought <laughs> no I'm very pro Whitney then I don't think that's prove us the wrong. <laughs> reception on I'm seeing online also apparently yeah. she so the girls were saying in the podcast that Whitney was like really surprised to see that she was the villain mm. um, of the season, and she's like yeah. really upset, and she's like crying in interviews a lot. Um, and they were all, and they were also saying a good point, which is like, I think in her mind she truly is the victim. Like I, I true, I don't think that this is an act. I do think this is her reality. <laughs> like that's how she sees things, right? But I just can't help feel, but like she's like kind of like super calculated. Like is that? No, she's like, for sure really calculated. Yeah, because even, like, I feel like her portrayal of herself trying to come across, like, super, like, you know, normal, sensible, whatever, is, feels like it's, like, being done on purpose and, like, we're being fed a narrative version of herself. Like, is that... Yeah. Okay, they also that say... They also say that, like, she acts like she doesn't care, but she actually cares more than, like, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which I could, I could believe. I could believe. And I could have, yeah. I guess but I could just like, believe that. <laughs> is she doing all of this to like? I think they were like, is she trying to look like a villain? Like, is she playing into being a villain? Right. It's like I don't think she's doing that. I, I think, think she. So. I think she tried to make Taylor the villain, but it just like didn't yeah. work. And I think she's like genuinely trying to make herself look really good. And I think that that just like either it, like production has kind of like had a really good job of kind of like editing it to like lead us to this conclusion or that's just kind of naturally like what we're picking up of like maybe like we're not getting like a authenticity or something from her that we're like lacking that maybe if we like got that we would be on her side yeah I mean that's what the girls are saying in the podcast they're they're kind of being like no like you that's right yeah like that's that's the right um (laughs) description of her um but to your point that is people's downfall in reality tv it's like when you try to be too calculated when you try to portray yourself in a certain way like the audience picks up on that and it like never works like it yeah. never turns out in your favor yeah well and maybe it does work sometimes and maybe we just don't even know on the times that it does work that that's what they were planning all along but right but when so it doesn't do work it, you have really, to be really good at it really good you're like a really good actor <laughs> uh, well apparently she's trying to be an actress or something they were saying yeah. on the podcast i guess that makes sense i feel like they're all kind of like a little bit in that like social that that like circle of kind of like wanting that or something adjacent to that right like that's very much yeah. like the housewives as well they're all kind of just that. so just to go to the mom talk thing for one second yeah i don't know if i saw mom talk in general but i definitely had seen taylor pop up in my tip tick talk before yeah. yeah um and it's just so crazy the amount of money they're making from just being a group of like really attractive women yeah. who who film dances together and they're not even like they're not dancers or anything they're just doing like no. the trendy like like hand things and like yeah. whatever <laughs> yeah and they're doing like a lot of like text overlay like yeah sto- story time text overlays where they're like i don't i don't i can't give an example <laughs> other than well, they, I, the ones that they put in the show <laughs> yeah exactly which I, th- I also think is like super interesting that they like edited so many of those into i, I loved that the, like the transitions i thought that was genius um yeah. because we have short attention spans and we need we need colorful beautiful things to look at <laughs> <laughs> well, nice images <laughs> what's so funny too though is i feel like this show premise started because of the whirlwind of attention that came from taylor mm-hmm. exposing mom talk of yeah. being swimmer swingers and then mm-hmm. just like these mormon mom swingers yeah and i feel like that was like the first episode mm-hmm. and then they yeah. the second episode they flash forward 11 months <laughs> and it's a whole other show and i'm just yeah. like really confused about the timing and like was that by design or like did they not know it was going to be followed up with like I just yeah how did that happen that's a good question yeah I I was kind of wondering that too like I think I think my best guess is that basically they probably started to do like a like a test pilot or something where they were like filming kind of like you know 11 months prior and they like started to like you know see like okay is there any chemistry here like can we see what what kind of work um kind of similar to what they're doing allegedly for Vanderpump Rules right now right like the season whatever of Vanderpump Rules that who even knows if it's a spinoff or whatever it is but they're just like filming stuff to kind of like get a sense of like okay what would this look like if this was a thing Mm -hmm. um 
and or is it kind of like southern charm too right you said that it used to be like called, called like southern gentleman oh yeah so before before they like you know you just film something beforehand and so they're using that and they're able to bridge it with kind of like you know the images of the uh arrest that happens between dakota and taylor and then they're like okay well now it's been greenlit let's go ahead get a production company let's start to follow a story oh my god we just found out that taylor's pregnant what if we wait until taylor is like this many months along and we can kind of like follow that part of the drama and then they probably like you know get the whole process running and yeah that that's makes my theory. sense. <laughs> that, that's, it's a good theory because I was just kind of like, was this on purpose? Like, that's that's yeah. like such a big jump between filming. It is a really um, big jump because especially <laughs> to like put cameras down and be like, okay, guys, wait a minute. We're going to wait and see Let what happens. Let this simmer for a year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but if you're still not hooked after this conversation yeah. <laughs> uh, or if you're incredibly confused yeah. and just want to go watch just to figure out what we're talking about, yeah, just, just to like set the stage a little bit. Episode yeah. one, yeah. we have the the swinger scandal mm -hmm. we have um uh, a husband kind of cheating on his wife the entire marriage by being yeah. on tinder yeah um and we have like police cam footage of an arrest yeah like it's <laughs> it's in, it's a lot yeah it's like oh that went there like and it's like interesting too because like the first you first episode you really don't know where it's gonna go you're kind of like okay like this seems relatively normal <laughs> And then you're like, oh, no, there's nothing normal about this. You're like, dear God, what am I about to wow. witness? <laughs> that took a turn really quickly. And then you're like, wait a minute, she's the one getting arrested? Actually, I have that a question confusing. about that. Because so I do understand. I read a little bit of like the report as well to kind of like figure out what happened. And so she did kind of like throw things. And like, I can understand why she was the one that got the charges and got arrested was, or whatever. So it was Taylor. Taylor was. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, Taylor was arrested for domestic assault of, um, of Dakota. Yeah. Of Dakota, her, yeah. her boyfriend. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, she threw like heavy, like chairs. She, like, at it was like him, a chair or something. Yeah. But it hit her. I heard, I heard that it hit her kid. Like her yeah, five -year -old. It, hit, it hit her daughter as well. And so like, and so that's kind of part of what the charges were, but I also kind of like wonder, like, does it, does it mean that he pressed the charges Cause like, oh. yeah, I don't know. Cause he, at, at first it seems like, she, cause she's saying that she was really scared because he like came at her. Yeah. But that's yeah, just I it. Like know. if she ended up being the one that got like arrested and like had the charges pressed against her, like, is that because he pressed the charges against her or is he, did they, did they just like have to press charges because. I mean, maybe it could be that there was like yelling and and the like their neighbor called or something because yeah. they're because it's not what you you hear someone's voice being like oh yeah. it sounds like she's trying to get out or yeah something they have like. they have like they have like the 911 call of like the person like initially reporting the all oh, right but he still would have had to press charges regardless of who called the cops yeah to go forward right right i think so i don't know if anybody knows <laughs> how this works especially if it's a, maybe it's a utah thing like i don't know if it's state by state or how that works um, but if you do know how the charges come against you, um, let us know, because I would be super interested in ha figuring that out. Because if he pressed the charges against her, I have a new bone to pick with Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, already Dakota is, like, very questionable. Yeah, very um, questionable. As is another husband who is definitely <laughs> yeah. not coming out on top of mm. uh, this season. Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> But he's an Affleck. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's very generous to call him an Affleck. <laughs> yes, I, like did, I did see the comparison. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so funny. Oh my god, I know it's so unfortunate. Um, he really just needs to cut his hair. Like I think that that would at least, apparently I he think, did. News okay, on the, good. News from I, the podcast. News from the podcast. Okay, good. I feel like that would at least like just like fix things. Like I don't know, twenty percent. Um, but yeah, so Zach who is Jen, Jen's husband, her husband that has just finished his graduated university and he's going into medical school. And they're and the most a, like devout Mormons to self-proclaimed, self but also proclaimed uh, by the rest of the group. According to them, until we find out that Zach, I don't want to say he has a gambling problem, but has a proclivity to gambling. <laughs> Does that feel accurate? What's the thing? He got so mad when someone was like drinking alcohol in his presence. Yeah, that his... four people got uninvited to their baby blessing because yeah. one person, two people, I guess technically, were drinking alcohol in their presence at their parents' house. Yeah, which apparently is yeah a worse thing to do 
than verbally basically assaulting your wife and calling yeah. her really, really horrible things. Yeah. And saying, and saying that, saying that you'll divorce, divorce yeah. if she goes to a Chippendales. Yeah, exactly. Performance that she doesn't even go to. Meanwhile, you are like using her money to gamble at the roulette table or whatever. But, craps but table, thing, who like, knows? If you're going to be so like gender stereotype or, yeah. you know, and, and be so by the book. Yeah. You're also very okay with like just taking two thousand dollars of your wife's money to gamble, right? Like, and, like maybe, maybe just losing all of it. Like, okay, yeah. that's cool. That's that's totally fine. Um, and allegedly, according to Demi, maybe even having gambled more of that of that money, more than that money, like, not yeah, cool. The, the, uh, yeah, it's 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 just so crazy the treatment of men versus women, like in, yeah. in this area. Yeah. Um. So that and was the fact that he like one. he he behaves that way, and then also like has like such intense standards for Jen, That's his 20, 24 year old wife, mother of his two children, who is literally, literally, literally payroll it, bankrolling literally their family, bankrolling their family, putting him through medical school, and she can't go to a Chippendales. She didn't even know she was going to. Like, come on. And she like I was so like kind of impressed by her in the sense that like she feels so much older than 24 like mm -hmm. I feel like she seems like she has such a good head on her shoulders and like yeah. I, I was just kind of like shocked at the way that she speaks and like compose like carries herself like yeah. outside of all the religious aspects like yeah yeah I think that she like she seems really interesting and I feel like she does kind of come across like very like two, not two dimensional, two dimensional is bad, three dimensional, <laughs> two dimensional is not bad, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I feel like there's a lot more kind of like story there too, which I guess is like in general, like what I'm excited about, about this season is that there feels like there's a lot more story there and I'm excited for it to kind of like come back. That's what they were saying is like, I think there's so much behind a lot of the women and their stories and like a lot of it really focused on Taylor and Whitney and like, we only got to see like glimpses of mm -hmm. kind of the other woman and like what they have going on. So yeah, yeah, would definitely be interested in a in a second season. Also, yeah. what came out on on the podcast is she was saying, Jen, that mm -hmm. like now watching it back, like she sees that it was kind of like there's some toxicity in her relationship, and they're mm -hmm. like going to therapy, and he's oh, saying good. that he's going to change. And she even said that there was like parts after filming where she wondered if she was even going to stay in this relationship. So wow. Good for yeah. her. She well, said her, that, like, her frontal lobe is probably fully developed now as well, so that's good. <laughs> Just took one more year for it to fully get Dude, there. Dude, <laughs> some of them are married at, like, 19. I know. 19. You're I literally know. a baby. Like, uh, you were a baby. You were literally a baby. And also, like, I'm sorry, but it kills me because, like, part of what Taylor says at the very beginning of, like, why she and her husband her, that she got divorced from and, like, had all the swinger drama with, like, part of the reason that they – the only reason that they got married is because her mom was, like – I know that you guys are having like relations out of wedlock and you need to have, you need to get married. That's your next step well, now. Like I mean, look, like a, a lot of, like, I think multiple of them got married cause they basically got pregnant and then yeah. they had to. Yeah. And then a lot of them got divorced because they're getting yeah. married before they even know who they are as people. Yeah. Like they're, they're literally like, even finished university yet. Like, come it's on. just like, <laughs> it's so wild. It's so crazy. And then also like for them even to get divorced, is like kind of shunned and like a stigma mm. that they're like breaking. So yes, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's there's. It's we wild. would need so long to unpack these things. <laughs> like there's just so there's thoughts. layers. Like there's layers to this show. Yeah, there really is. <laughs> which is kind of the amazing thing about it that I did not expect at all. Like I kind of thought that I was gonna like turn it on and like turn off my brain and like be done with it. <laughs> I also didn't think I would like as many of the girls as I do. Mm, like, yes. I, I find a lot of them, like, very likable. Yeah. And even the one, like, I would probably say that Whitney's probably, like, the one that I like the least. But even then, like, I would still watch her. Like, I would still see what else is going on with her. Like, I'd be interested to follow her next season. Yeah. Yeah, so. for sure. I mean, and then also, like, the fact that these girls are not, like, long-term friends. Like, they all became friends because of mom talk. Mm -hmm. So they're all, like, relatively new friends. Yes, yeah. But I so feel like, like they s they still kind of, like, are nicer to each other than I feel like a lot of Housewives yeah. scenes that we've seen. Well, and also, like, the whole problem with Housewives a lot of the time is that, like, they can't admit that they don't actually like each other and that they're just there for the, f like, for the show. And, like, this solves that problem because they're just there for mom talk. <laughs> like, and that's yeah, fine. Yeah. They're willing to admit that they're just there for mom talk. And that's great. Like... 
we don't need to pretend that like you know heather marks and lisa barlow are biffles and that they hang out <laughs> outside of things like it's okay yeah i we're, just we're adults <laughs> i want to see a crossover do you know if any of the salt lake city women the real housewives have like commented on this I don't know if they've commented on it, but I'd love to see a crossover or like like to see see, see them interact in the wild. I think that'd be so interesting. Oh my gosh, please make it happen. I'm sure Bravo is trying to figure out how to do that. It's gonna, yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) If only, if only. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that is an incredible show. I'm really excited to get a a season two. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let us know if you're watching. We can dive further into it. This was just kind of like our quick impressions yeah um like we said there's a lot to unpack here (laughs) (laughs) so much (laughs) 